This is what happens when you think you're getting a CNC router with six inches of Z travel, but you don't actually check. What's going on? My name's Callie, the OKist engineer, and we're down here in my basement for what I think will be a multi-video series where I'm going to attempt to build a custom carbon fiber seat from start to finish. I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, I've never done this before, but I'm fully embracing the fail fast mentality and worst case scenario, you guys get to see and learn from my mistakes. I wanna start off by explaining how I plan to make a mold from a plug and then finally pulling a part from my mold. Although this process is much more labor intensive, it ends up producing a much superior part than some of the other methods. Uh, let's be clear, the only thing I'm trying to do is make a really cool looking carbon fiber seat. So quality is pretty important. The plug is usually made from a material that's pretty easy to work with. Uh, for our case, we're gonna be using Pink Panther foam and we'll finish off the surface with some fiberglass cloth followed by some Bondo and some high build primer just to make it really smooth. Once you have the plug finished to your liking, you can then make a perfect replica of that plug by laying up your mold directly on the surface of the part. In our case, we're gonna be using a layer of gel coat to protect the surface and then follow that up with a few layers of fiberglass for strength. Uh, once that sets up, you can then pull your plug out. In our case, we'll probably lose it because it's just uh, soft foam, but that's totally okay. You end up with a mold that is an exact replica of the negative of the plug that you started with. This way, when you come back in to follow it up with a carbon fiber part, your carbon fiber part will be dimensionally exactly the same as the plug that you started with. And that's a perfect segue in explaining how I plan to make the plug for this carbon fiber seat. A buddy of mine picked up this Velo X CNC router at an auction, didn't have the space for it, and was nice enough to give it to me for all my projects. All I had to do was get a spindle for it and get it to work and that was it. Um, I picked up this spindle on Amazon for about 350 bucks. It's water cooled, works great. It has a reservoir that sets over here full of water and a Home Depot bucket. Then for fume extraction, I hung a shop vac from the ceiling. It runs into a cyclone separator. And this does a whole lot of help in, in getting the foam out of the air before it goes into the filter and plugs everything up. Highly recommend one of these. The only down or disadvantage from this one is the bucket's a little too small. So I'll probably end up putting a second bucket on here to increase the volume and capacity. That runs down just to some three, 3D printed parts that I've made um, to sit around the spindle and help uh, vacuum those particles up. This whole thing runs off of a program called uh, Mach 3 CNC. It runs on standard G-code that you can generate with just about any CAD CAM software. We'll go over what I use here in a little bit. The important thing to note though, is the volume that I have to work with. So this has a six inch height in Z, and then it's about four by four uh, feet in X and Y. Uh, the key here is the six inches in height. So I'm gonna have to break up my mold, excuse me, my plug into as many pieces that uh, are required so that it will fit under the six inch height of the gantry. So that's gonna be one challenge that I have to kind of overcome. I opened up my favorite CAD software on Shape and rather than starting from scratch, I found this free CAD download online and figured it was a good starting point. How do I know this CAD file is gonna fit me? I don't. I took a couple measurements and globally scaled the model to get close, but if all this works out the first try, I'm gonna be shocked. I'll make some adjustments later and we'll have to do this all over again. With just the surface of the seat isolated, I could now start to fill in material for what eventually will be the plug. Cutting the material with the seat surface and then hiding the surface will give you an idea what the plug will look like. The way the seat is gonna sit in the helicopter, I don't need the shoulder harness holes or the headrest. I catted in a generous radius around the entire perimeter of the seat. That way it would give the carbon fiber part a little bit more rigidity. And the last step was to split the mold into two pieces that would fit comfortably inside the envelope of my CNC machine. All right, we're gonna make these molds out of some Pink Panther insulation foam that you can get from Home Depot. Uh, this is the more dense uh, material, 25 PSI. Uh, we're gonna use just a small fine tooth saw to get that thing cut out uh, and stack these pieces together to get the right size. So let's go ahead and get that cut out. Now that we have the foam cut out to size. I'm gonna glue them together using 3M Super 77 uh, multi-purpose spray adhesive. Um, so we'll get these together. Uh, this foam is two inches thick. My mold um, sizes are six inches. So three of these stacked together, I'll make that right. 
Um, so yeah, let's just get into it. <clears throat> All right, we'll let that sit for a couple hours and go throw it on the machine. This is what happens when you think you're getting a CNC router with six inches of Z travel, but you don't actually check. Turns out it's about, my stock is six inches, and for some reason, someone designed this to be five inches and seven eighths tall. Uh, so I'm gonna have to come up with a different solution. I've seen some other people be successful using double-sided tape to hold their workpiece down to the table. I figured I'd give it a shot, considering the worst that could happen is it would throw some foam across the basement floor. Not a big deal. The quick fix was just to handwrite some G-code that would run a pass from back to front. Not ideal with a half-inch end mill, but you do with what you have. As I mentioned before, the plug was designed to be made from 6-inch material, so I don't have much room from where the bottom of the seat will be machined to the bottom of the foam. As you can tell, we're going to cut it as close as possible. Let's jump into Kirimoto, which is a CAD CAM application that plugs directly into Onshape. You can import directly from your library, and in this case, it's the seat bottom for our plug for the carbon fiber seat. You can go and assign tools and toolpaths. In this case, we're doing a rough and contour. And finally, you can slice and preview all your toolpaths. There's even an animation feature that helps you identify any missteps in your code. So I just finished the first part ever on this machine and I am stoked with how it turned out. I don't know what I was expecting, but uh, it really wasn't this. This foam machined phenomenally well. The surface finish is awesome. Um, these nicks here are actually from the original cuts, uh, pre-cuts on the, on the foam, but I'm not worried about that. Uh, I was super worried actually about the, the uh, glue lines between the layers, but that turned out to be sweet, worked perfectly. Um, it's a little bit delicate, so I nicked it here with the vacuum when I was cleaning everything up, but I mean, this is gonna work way better than I expected, stoked with this result. And just because, here's another cool time lapse of the second piece getting machined. It's been a few weeks since I've machined these molds and I'm starting to realize that I missed a couple things. Um, I also want to be very clear that from here on out I have no idea what I'm doing. I've never done this before. This is where I start to earn the okayest in the okayest engineer and hope that my bucket of luck is far bigger than my empty bucket of experience. Um, but anyways, um, a couple things are starting to bite me. The spray adhesive I use between the foam is starting to let up and so there's some sections that um, are a little squishy which I don't think is going to be ideal. Uh, the other thing I did is I should have made this mold a few inches wider uh, so when I go to make when I pull the mold off of um, the plug the goal is to be able to have enough room around the edge so that my vacuum bag will stick to it. And right now I have about a half inch on this side uh, and a half inch on the other. Um, the sharp edges are also not helping, so I'm gonna have to get rid of those. Uh, and I think I'm just gonna use some cardboard or something to give me a little shelf there to extend the width of this mold and hopefully make my life a little easier down the way. Um, so, so yeah, that's next. I don't think I need to sand anything. I think it's gonna be just fine. I'm gonna put probably two layers of, um, I think three ounce um, fiberglass mat down. That'll give it, I hope, enough strength that I can follow up with some high build primer. Um, and the goal here is to just polish this turd as good as I can, um, make it as pretty as it can be so that when I go and put that uh, gel coat and uh, fiberglass on top of it to strengthen that mold. 
that when I break this all apart, I'll lose my plug, but I'm not really worried about that. Um, I'll be left with a really, really nice, um, perfect impression of this plug in the mold. So this just has to stand up long enough to make it pretty uh, and to lay up some, some fiberglass on it. And, and that's the use case. Um, so to fix the delamination issue I'm having because of the spray adhesive, I think I'm going to use some just drywall screws and screw a few of these locations together. I'm debating if it's gonna work better through the top or through the bottom. I'm not worried about blemishes out here, uh, outside the mold. Um, that'll all get covered up and bondoed and, and uh, primered anyways. So I'm just gonna try and avoid anything on the actual like seat surface. And uh, I might try and attack um, from the bottom to see if I can't pull some of these chunkier bits together. Um, we'll find out. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if this is gonna be bad, good, it's going to be irrelevant, but I'm going to try and do my best to hedge my bets. Um, so anyways, let's start to chop this thing up, make this foam a little bit more um, ready to start laying down some fiberglass. And then uh, that's where the fun starts. And this is with the handful of screws that I put in there. It seems to tighten everything up fairly well. Um, I don't think it needs to be perfect, but this is going to be better than it was before. Hopefully it can hold up to the abuse of just me sanding um, and painting this thing. a little bit I'm going to show you what has kind of worked for me I have this um, fine tooth saw it's usually meant for cutting dowels um, or pieces of wood off flush with the surface but in this case it worked pretty good for getting rid of all the bulky pieces um, so that's what I ran around with uh, to get all the big stuff down um, I found some just sandpaper around and I started giving that a shot and it turned out that worked out pretty well too um, use the noise but you can get kind of a good nice smooth clean transition once uh once you've gotten the bulk out you can smoothen it out all with just some sandpaper i've got this thing pretty well cleaned up at least good enough for my liking um with the sandpaper all the sharp edges are blended everything seems to be okay and the only thing left to do is to fix this void this void on the other side and then um, uh, do something to extend the mold uh, on that side. I think for up here, it's shallow enough um, that I think I'm just going to taper the whole thing, um, make it flat, and that should be good enough. It'll be plenty wide for me to put my vacuum bag to. Uh, for this side, um, I had some leftover pink paint to foam, and so I'm going to use a good edge. So this side is good, and then this side is the factory edge. Um, I'm going to set that up in here because I know those edges are square as well. Um, and so I'll cut that rough to size. I'll mark kind of along the shape and cut it roughly. We'll get that all glued in. I might use a, a few screws to get that set. Uh, and then I'll rough that out by hand and fill in that gap. Uh, for the side, on the other side, uh, since I have nothing to work with, I'll probably just put... Um, a two inch just extension over here, uh, trim it to fit, glue it on, and uh, and then blend it in with the sander. That should fix the left and right at the bottom. Um, and then kind of similar concept for these two voids on the sides. I think I'm gonna do the same. Uh, cut a small piece, glue and screw it in, fill it in, and just make it look pretty. Once again, the whole goal here is just to have a nice smooth um, exterior surface that's a few inches wide so that my vacuum bag and tape have enough room to stick there uh, and I don't get caught with overlapping carbon fiber getting into my um, places where I need to seal my vacuum bag. So pretty close, pretty stoked how it turned out so far. Um, 
and uh, let's try and fit a couple of those other pieces of foam in here. That went way better and ended up being way easier than I expected. This, uh, this pink panther foam is super easy to work with. Um, you saw it sanded in real nice and easy. I got some nice clean lines. Um, same is true for all the pieces that I did, uh, left, right, and, and bottom. This one just added a, a two inch block to the left side. Um, you can see I just tapered off the top. That line is just the separation between the two pieces of foam. Um, so all good there. And then last minute I came in, figured I should add a little bit more room on the bottom. So just put another piece down there. But yeah, overall stoked. This is going way better than I anticipated. I think that's going to do it for this video. I appreciate you guys sticking around. I hope you come back next time as we throw down some fiberglass and get this plug ready for a mold. I also hope you take this as an opportunity to try something new. I don't know what I'm doing. We're figuring it out. We're doing it live. You know the drill. Go build something cool. Never stop learning. And we'll see you on the next one.